Hi, I'm Nancy with On Points Tutorial Tips and Tours. We're going to talk to you about hand applique today. The one most important thing I think you need to know about hand applique is there is literally hundreds of different types of hand applique. I know people that have been hand appliqueing for years and they do the most beautiful hand applique, but they still go down to North Carolina and take an entire week's worth of hand applique classes from different teachers because every teacher has something that they do a little bit different. And when it comes to hand applique, there is so many different methods. So don't ever let yourself be convinced that I don't like hand applique because so-and-so taught me how to do it and I didn't do it very good. Try them all. Take as many classes as you can with teachers doing hand applique. I promise in the end you will find your happy technique and you will love hand applique. So we're going to start by covering a lot of the tools that we're going to use today. Now somewhere down in the road in the future, we're going to actually cover different techniques, but for now, we're going to cover some simple beginner techniques of hand applique. The first tool that we're going to show you is using Tear Away Stabilizer. Now, I have two brands here today. I have a Pellon brand and the Sulky brand. Both of these are tear away stabilizers. Now, some people are worried that when they use tear away stabilizer, it's going to actually make the applique stiff. It will, which actually is what you need it to do for the first technique. So it'll be on the back of your fabric. But what you need to realize is that tear away stabilizer is one of the stabilizers that embroiderers will use like on the back of a sweatshirt. So if you've ever had a sweatshirt that's got a, um, a machine embroidery on it, you know the first time you wear it, it's really kind of stiff. And then you wash it and it gets a little softer. And you wash it and it gets a little softer. Well, that's what will happen when you use it with your hand applique too. So we need it to be stiff for the turning technique, but know that tear away stabilizer will get softer and softer the more you wash it. We're going to use some, hand, some of the hand applique pins. Now, these pins come from Clover, and they're really fabulous for a couple of reasons. One, they come in this handy little treasure box for keeping all your pins nice and organized. And there it is. When you look at it, it's only about a half inch long. And the head of the pin, instead of actually having a normal head of the pin, it actually has this coating in a teardrop so that when your thread might get wrapped around your um, needle, your pin while you're hand appliqueing, the thread will actually slip off over that teardrop. So they've created it so that it actually make it easier to use when you're doing hand applique. So those are the Clover hand applique pins. This is my favorite thimble. All right, this thimble, I believe, is still on the market for about $1.79. It's still my favorite thimble. I buy them by the box of six. I like that it fits over my finger and my nail can come out. Everybody I know has their own favorite thimble. Thimbles can be really inexpensive, $1.79, up to really expensive. There's some out there that are in the $200 range. So a thimble is going to be a very personal choice. Scissors. I'm going to use three different types of scissors in my technique. This is a serrated pair of scissors from Havel. This is a pair of smooth, sharp, sharp edge scissors from um, Kai Scissors. And this is my little pair of Dovo scissors. And that's going to have one pointy tip and one curved tip. Love that for hand applique. Up here, we're going to use some water-soluble glues. Now, these are glue sticks. This is going to be non-toxic, water-soluble glue. So when you're using it on your fabric, it's not going to hurt your fabric. And when you wash the quilt, it's going to go away. Now I've got it in a couple of different sizes here. This big size is obviously the most affordable, maybe two bucks for this entire big um, glue stick. But it is kind of big and cumbersome. This is probably the size you'll find more often. It's going to be probably twice as expensive as the really big fat glue stick. And then there's a couple of companies on the market. This one is Boheen. This one is a glue stick that's like a pen. And so it's very easy and convenient to use. You're going to have most, the best control using this glue stick. And it comes, there are um, refill packs available. This is a piece of wet paper towel. I'll show you how I'm going to use that later on. This gl Roxanne's glue based it. We used that earlier in our machine applique techniques. We're going to use it in hand applique also. This is my Clover All, so this is going to be my very sharp instrument. 
a permanent marking pen, an erasable marking pen. So this again is the friction marking pen we talked about earlier. That's the one where you can mark it on fabric, iron it off and it disappears. This is a stapler. <laughs> Here is a bone ash pressing sheet. Now I could go on and on with what the bone ash pressing sheet does, but for what we want it for, it's that it's non-stick. This is a Teflon um, pressing sheet. You can press your um, iron on it. You can protect fabrics with it. I'm actually going to use it so that when I'm gluing the glue on my stabilizer, it won't get sticky. Going to move that over there. Here we're going to have a little needle case. Now you can make your own cute little needle case. A friend of mine made me this. And the idea is it's just going to have pieces of wool to keep your needles in place so that you're not poking yourself. The clover needle threader we're going to talk about later on. We're also going to talk about threads later on. I'm going to go into depth a little bit um, deeper about what kind of threads you might use for hand applique, but know that this is YLI silk and this is a 50 weight cotton. We will also cover Thread Heaven, which is a silicone thread conditioner. And then needles. My favorite needle for hand applique is a number 10 between. This is from Roxanne's. Another very popular needle for hand applique is a Milner's needle. You can see that it's a very long needle. I have no control when I use a long needle. I can't get the tiny stitches I want, so I prefer the little one inch between needle, but I know a lot of hand appliqueers that use a longer Milner's needle. This is a little ironing and pressing sheet. Oh, I realized I just missed something. Okay, let's go back over to here. We're going to talk about Karen K. Buckley's Perfect Circles. So she's got her Perfect Circles. This is the original. Now this came with, as you can see, a whole bunch of different sizes. And these are made out of Mylar template plastic. We're going to show you today how to actually make perfect circles using these. Well, this was such a hit, she decided to take it a couple of steps further. So the next thing she came out with was the bigger perfect circles, and as you would guess, they are bigger. And again, a lot of different sizes, multiples of each size so that you can actually make multiple um, circles. And then she took it one step further into the ovals. Now here you can see the range that they come in. So the perfect circles are going to go from a little half inch all the way up to a two inch perfect circle. And the same with the ovals, it's going to start with a little half inch wide and go up to about one inch wide by one and a half. You can do really cool techniques with those. This is a little cutting and pressing surface that we'll use later on. You cut on one side, you press on the other. A clover mini iron, this became popular probably 20 years ago. It started showing up all over the place. It is a very hot little iron that when it's plugged in, this little tip is going to give you a lot of control when you're doing ironing on these techniques. You wouldn't be able to do what we're going to do with, this, with a large iron, so you need to have a small one. This happens to be a um, Teflon case, so that if it's hot, you can actually pack it away and take it home with you. We'll use some scotch tape, nothing too busy there. This is Mylar template plastic. Keeping in mind, Mylar template plastic is always going to be kind of creamy like this one is, and it is heat resistance. So the techniques we're going to show you, you'll be able to press on it without the plastic melting. This is Mary Ellen's Best Press. We talked about it a little bit earlier. This is the spray sizing. I love the liquid form. We're going to be able to put it in the little um, bowl and paint it on with the paintbrush. So that is just a few of the tools that you would use for hand applique. Thanks for watching our video. Be sure you subscribe to our channel. We wouldn't want you to miss a single one. Leave a comment. We would love to hear from you.